Good morning again, students. Mr. Kirk here. We're going to continue our exploration of magnetic fields and specifically back into chapter two. This time we're in lesson 2.2. And today's lesson is going to require uh, your imagination. You're going to have to be creative and, and do some thought experiments because we're not going to be in class to do experiments together. So I'm going to walk us through um, a series of slides here, and um, hopefully you'll be able to kind of think your way through the experiments um, and get the, the appropriate answers. So we'll start off with the, the warm up and um, you're given this uh, this mechanism here where we have a crank and a flywheel and a ball launcher. And we see that it's the, the hand crank powers the flywheel um, and the ball launcher, okay? And um, you could have created this, probably didn't create something this elaborate, but here you can see where the kinetic energy um, comes into place on the flywheel and then the ball launcher goes from, it converts kinetic into potential and then when it's released, it goes back into kinetic. So. What I want you to do is just fill this out um, over here on, on the right side. You'll see a section where uh, you'll just answer, you know, what parts of the system store potential energy. Answer those questions and then you'll be ready to move on to activity two, where we will start to connect the articles that uh, you read. So we need to understand that there is a relationship between speed and kinetic energy. Again, kinetic energy is the energy that we that an object has because it is moving, all right? So if we look at the launch speed data from the Universal Space Agency, and then think about what that tells us about kinetic energy in the launches. So um, on Monday, we see that uh, we, we had the magnets farther apart we had a speed of 80 meters per second. And then on Tuesday, we moved them closer together. And that gave us a speed of 90 meters per second. And then on Wednesday, we moved them again, a centimeter closer. So this was a centimeter, this was a centimeter. And whereas you might've thought it would have gone up to 100 meters per second, now we overshot. We jumped up to 120 meters per second. And uh, just to connect your, your, uh, your memory, before Thanksgiving, we talked about um, how it was not a misalignment of the magnets, okay? So kinetic energy is the energy an object has because it's moving. So I want you to think for a second and how, how does kinetic energy and speed relate to each other? All right. so. <clears throat> The faster that an object is moving, which is generally how we describe speed, the more kinetic energy that it has. So if you look at this uh, experiment, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which test did the spacecraft have the most kinetic energy? Well, it was faster on Wednesday. So therefore Wednesday, it had more kinetic energy. So our investigation question is how can magnets cause objects to have kinetic energy. And the articles that you read in the last section that may have been yesterday, it may have been earlier today. I don't know when you when you worked through that, but in lesson 2.1, uh, we looked at these articles describing how people move with a lot of kinetic energy. Okay, and we're going to go back to those texts and we're looking for additional evidence about how people doing sports, playing sports, get and use kinetic energy. So after you reread the article or just at least re refresh your memory of what it was, if you just read it earlier today, then, then you don't need to reread it. <clears throat> I want you to think about, and I, we don't have partners on this. So I just want you to think about what happens in the sport that you read about and where does the kinetic energy that people get during that sport come from? Then I want you to answer the questions uh, listed below in section 2.2. Okay. Um, and I want you to think about these questions 
because we're going to use this in, in the the next activity in the next portion of of this so don't just you know think this through and like, throw it away i want you to hang on to these ideas so you'll put your your answer down here where does the kinetic energy people get from this work come from and you'll turn that in and there is a relationship between potential energy kinetic energy and force so here we have uh, potential energy here we have kinetic energy the energy that's stored in this particular system it's stored as potential energy and then a force comes in and converts that potential energy into kinetic energy and the object moves okay and and this could be a lot i mean this Kinetic energy can create a, a massive amount of speed. So one way to think about this is, you know, if you ride an elevator up to the top of a hundred story building, you at the top of that building have a lot of potential energy. And if some force comes along and knocks you off that building, that potential energy will quickly be converted into kinetic energy as gravity pulls you down and that would create a lot of speed it would create a lot of force enough that it would it would kill you when you had impact right so this is not a small thing that we're looking at here it's a very powerful dynamic so refresher hopefully this is a refresher potential energy it's the energy that's stored into an object or system that can be uh, in the in the form of chemical energy. There can be energy that's stored potentially um, in a chemical. It could be the description I just gave you, where uh, an object is is up and gravity is pulling on it, and as soon as it you know rolls off whatever is holding it up, or is pushed or jumped or falls or rolls or whatever, um, then it it that potential energy converts into kinetic energy and when I say convert <clears throat> this is a fancy word where we're in science we're specifically saying it's changing from one type to another so when we convert energy we're converting it from potential to kinetic or or from kinetic back to potential so a really good example of you know going back and forth converting back and forth would be a swing when um, the swing is is up at its highest point it stops for a moment and there's zero kinetic energy it's all potential energy and then as it comes back it's it converts from potential to kinetic until it's at the very bottom of the swing at that point there's zero potential energy it's all kinetic energy and then it continues to push and as it goes back it converts from kinetic into potential and then when it's back up at the top it's all potential it's non-kinetic and then it swings back down again and converts back unfortunately we can't do this hands-on experiment so you're going to have to use your imagination for this but uh this is what you have to work with Okay, we've got a ruler and a bag and a spring and a rubber band and two. Uh, this is like a pom pom ball. I think this is like a regular like uh, uh, rubber ball. And these are a couple of blocks. Okay, and you're gonna look. You're gonna actually create a system with these objects, with um, and, and describe and look at kinetic and potential energy. And you're gonna describe the motion of the object so you can draw some conclusions okay when we talk about a system we're talking about um, a series of parts that mechanically chemically use energy convert energy from potential to kinetic or back and forth so that we can use it for some purpose so you'll be building a system here um, and analyzing okay so a, a real simple system would be if I picked a ball up and I dropped it. And really, even though my hand does play a role in this, there's just two things in the system, right? There's the earth and the ball. 
and the gravity that pulls it and it goes as I lift it up it has potential energy the force of gravity converts that potential energy into kinetic energy as it falls towards the earth so we've got uh, a pom-pom rubber ball spring and a magnet okay this is what's in um, in your kit for you to use your brain on and you're going to make three systems here. In the first system, you, you, you can use anything except the magnets. And what I want you to do is I want you to create a system to show how an object can get kinetic energy. So um, you have to have at least two items that you would use. Um, I don't care which two items. You just can't use magnet. All right. And then you're just going to come down and fill in what two uh, parts of your system did you use and describe that? How did you add energy to the system and how was the energy converted in the system? Then we're going to take a look uh, at potential energy <clears throat> and you're going to look at how potential energy can be stored. Sometimes it's hard to visualize, um, certainly hard to visualize how strong something is, okay? Um, but the more you do it, the more you'll get kind of experience with that. And then you're gonna build a system with magnets, okay? So I want you to, after you build the first system, then we're gonna take a look at how you build systems, um, <clears throat> how you build systems uh, using magnets and how you can use those magnets to store uh, potential energy, how you can use those magnets to uh, convert that into kinetic energy, right? So in system two, you're gonna use magnets and describe um, where there was uh, potential energy and when there was more kinetic energy in the system. Okay. Remember, in the sport that you read about, there was a system as well. And there was a force that converted potential energy into kinetic energy for each one of those. All right. So that force, we would say, is evidence that kinetic energy in a system comes from potential energy that was stored in that system. I'll say that one more time. That force acting in that system provides evidence that the kinetic energy came from potential energy, okay? And so in this particular case, for uh, the two systems, in fact, um, if you can come up with two, at least come up with one. I'll give you full credit if you only have one system. But the idea is that you would use magnets to create um, a system that, that had potential energy in it and, and explain to me where the potential energy and the kinetic energy was, okay? A magnetic force, remember we, we said that it takes a force to convert from potential to kinetic or back, or back the other way? Well, a magnetic force counts, okay? So that force can be gravity. The, the examples I gave earlier was gravity, but a magnetic force can be used to convert potential to kinetic. Okay. <clears throat> and then finally for your homework, you're going to take the activity and the evidence that you got in your article. Okay. To try to answer the investigative question. How can magnets cause objects to have kinetic energy? So <clears throat> for this lesson, you'll do the warm up. Okay, so you'll do the warm up, which uh, is just looking at a system and answering three questions. You're going to remind yourself of the article that you read in, in section 2.1 and answer the question there. Then the confusing part is instead of doing a hands on activity, you're going to use the um, the, in, the tools that I've given you here. Let me just scroll back so you can see it. OK, and you're going to create at least two systems. Three would be awesome, but at least two. 
one without magnets, okay, that shows how we can get kinetic energy from potential energy, and one with magnets that shows how we can get kinetic energy from potential energy. And then you're going to do the homework where you'll use the evidence from this experiment, or at least thought experiment that you're going to do, and the article to kind of answer our uh, main question, which is how can magnets cause objects to have kinetic energy? How can magnetic force convert potential energy to kinetic energy? Okay, and then you'll hand that in.